We've seen a few of them. Got him. There we go. First throw. There we go. All right. Look, check this fish out, guys. Look how clear that water is. We've been seeing them cruising this grass edge out here, and I was having a hard time to see, and you'd see them turn on a bait, but you couldn't tell if they picked it up or not, and uh, pretty sure that one picked it up. <laughs> oh, very good, very nice fish. Come here, uh -huh. <laughs> Perfect hook set right in the top of the snout. And I'm going to show you something, guys. I Texas rigged a four inch real bright colored gulp minnow on a 3 16 ounce tungsten sinker. And the reason I did that is because I want to be able to see the bait. I was having a hard time seeing if my bait was on the edge. Fish are cruising the edge. And that, guys, is a pretty one. <laughs> beautiful. That's a beautiful fish, guys. So we'll get that put back. And slowly but surely, we're getting them put together here. What a gorgeous fish that is, though. Holy schmoly, one more quick look for the camera. <laughs> Thing about Texas rigging a gulp minnow uh, being non-traditional, I contacted uh, the folks at Berkeley who I work closely with, told them about my situation. And the funny thing uh, is the, the guy told me, the guy that produces all the soft plastics for Berkeley, which is a lot, told me of all the baits we make, that is the last one I would have thought about in that scenario. And ironically, it's gone on to be a very effective technique for us in a variety of places that we fish. So it goes to show you that thinking outside the box can sometimes get you a lot of bites and that's how new things are developed. Got him. There we go. <laughs> oh, and he pulled off. Yikes. <laughs> Should have put more hooks on him. Guys, there's more of them. Look down right here, guys. If you look down, you can see all this grass right here and all these, or this terrestrial vegetation. There's fish cruising all through it. And almost every one of them I see, if I put this thing down in front of them, they get a hold of it, but it's really, they're, they're just finicky. They're just being finicky. They're post-spawn, they're finicky. They're cruising around a small area, and that fish was really close range, and so I didn't quite set them as hard as I should have. At the end of the day, um, you gotta figure out how to get them to bite, right? And so for me, it becomes a finesse thing, but it's hard to throw finesse when you've got heavy cover everywhere and quality largemouth like we were dealing with. And so I surmise that if I got a piece of gulp for one, that way if they got close to it, they smell it, at that point they're, they're gonna, it's more realistic. It's gonna smell good, it's gonna taste good. If they get close enough to it, you got a higher chance for them to bite. For two, I wanted a bright color because I figured it would be a little bit of an irritant for one, for the fish, and for two, I could see it. And what do I mean by irritant? There's a lot of reasons why fish bite. Sometimes they're hungry, sometimes they're territorial, sometimes they're protecting babies, sometimes they're just curious. Well, in this case, I believe they were either territorial or, or fry guarding, and therefore really bright color is a way to kind of trip their trigger. It's a way to irritate them into biting, and it works pretty good in a lot of scenarios. In the case of, of the finesse gulp minnow, I took the very bright fire tiger color because it's literally the brightest color in my entire arsenal of baits for one which means I can see it and they can see it from a long ways away. For two, it's curious. It's not something they've ever seen. So if they're shy because they're being fished a lot, they haven't seen those kind of colors in that situation. There's almost no bass anglers that are gonna pick that color combination for largemouth bass in water that clear, which is exactly why we chose it. Now I needed to present this small finesse bait on tackle that I could land fish in heavy cover. And as you can see, the cover is very thick all the way around where we were fishing. So what I ended up doing is taking 50 pound braid on a medium heavy powered seven foot rod. So it's a little bit lighter than a flipping stick per se. It's more of an all around bass rod. It's medium heavy power, extra fast, but with 50 pound braid tied straight to my four aught Fusion 19 hook and the, and the little uh, bullet weight ahead of it, now I've got plenty of power to land whatever I need. And that works out to be pretty good because I use a really fast reel, I use the Revo ALF reel, on the medium heavy rod and it works out to be a really potent combination more so than you might think for the waters that we were dealing with and even in the crystal clear water that braid was not an issue the fish are so irritated that the braid is not an issue because they're not they're not worried about the line they're not thinking of eating this they just irritated by it 
and or curious about it and we could watch some of the fish swim over and eat it. They'd swim from two feet away and pick it up. So the braid was not an issue. Some, some, some of you are going to ask why no leader, why no leader? Because with the heavy cover we had right there, less knots is better and that's what I chose to stick with. Now that little minnow on the 4 out Fusion 19 hook uh, it, it presents no negative cues. There's nothing to, to set them off to tell them that this is not something they should eat. There's no flash, there's no vibration, there's no heavy metal to it. When they pick it up, it feels right and it tastes right. And by the way, those point blank hook sets are super fun as well. You got it. You got him. There you go. That's why you throw the colored minnow on him, guys. <laughs> it's funny. He was looking for it. Oh, there's one chasing him, too. Yeah, get some, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we're going to swing him on up in here. That's a nice looking fish, guys. And look at that. Oh, it's a peeing male, too. Look at that. Oh, no, it's not either. I thought he was. There's another perfect one, guys. You know, he's not a monster. That's our smallest fish of the day so far. But the classic, I want, I want to put him back real quick here. And we'll be nice, because we love these guys. Mm, a big smooch for you, baby. Look how clear the water is. Hey, buddy. So real quick, when we lock the boat down, I pitched the, the uh, creature hog underneath there, way back underneath there. Nothing bit. I reeled it up and reeled it out of there real quick to pitch it again, and a fish came charging out from underneath the mat, chasing it. Well, I just, I figured out they really will eat this gold minnow better than anything else. And I can see when they pick it up. So all I did was set that rod down real quick, pick this rod up, throw it back. The fish that chased it out didn't get it, but another one spun around and got it. So it gives me a chance to see the bait. It's made out of gulp, so they're gonna hold it. And at this point, it's paying the bills. And you guys laugh all you want about me and my gulp minnow. It's catching them now in a spot that nobody would be throwing gulp minnows on a Texas rig on 50 pound braid. It's, it's power finesse, let's call it that, and it's paying the bill. Yeah, 50 pound braid sounds heavy, but by modern bass fishing standards, it's really not that heavy. And you know, it's the interesting thing about it is that it, it's, it's again, almost part of the presentation in the same way that the bright color is. Kelly Jordan, BASS Pro, Kelly Jordan, uh, MLF Pro these days, uh, he told me that there's times when he thinks the braid actually helps you get bites for that very reason. For instance, embedding fish. Uh, the fish that are, you're irritating them, that braid is just part of the deal. The 50 pound Trilene X5 braid is no problem for those fish in that situation. Now, if it's a feeding bite in crystal clear water, maybe it's another scenario, they'd be a little bit careful, but when they're just irritated by something and trying to remove it or defending their fry, the braid is not an issue.